Let's go back to Ballyhonus. As we said, goals are plenty in that first half. Carnacon 2 9. Kilkerran Clon Burn, four goals and four points. Let's rejoin Tom and Yvonne. Thanks, Angelina. And the game's just thrown in, and the throne was won by Carnacon, and they're on the attack very, very quickly from that from that winning that throw. And it's Fiona McHale into Cora. Just coming to turn onto her right foot, trying to sell the dummy of Sarah Gormley she's hit that one high into the square and it's going to drop short oh not red ball Louise Dowling couldn't quite get to it and there's a fisted over the bar but the way Aoife Brennan forgot the final touch on it but that early attack from Karen O'Conn paying dividends and, and it's a good way to get, start the second half 2-10 Karen O'Conn Kilclaren Rock Clomburn after 30 seconds 4-4 yeah, good score there by uh, by Aoife. Just got a touch on it. Um, it's just to note there, Darren Hughes gone into wing back here in the second half. Um, and Amy Dowling's gone out to midfield. Probably something to do with the hamstring injury she has. Um, probably too good to take off. So she's been moved into to wing back. And um, I think it's Maeve Larkin that's midway. Uh, Louise Dowling has be, has pushed up now into the corner forward spot. And Brianna Bruton is on here as well in the in the left corner forward position for Karen O'Conn. As Clarence Clamburn trying it get an instant reply to that point from Karen O'Conn and they're playing it across the 45 and exchange of hand passes between Chloe Miskell and Siobhan Dibley and they're breaking into the heart of the Karen O'Conn defence being held up there is Olivia Dibley and it's going to be a free in a foul and looks like um, Kilclair and Clamburn are going to try maybe and run that ball a bit, bit more than they were delivering the ball quickly into Louise Ward was such an effective tactic in the first half yeah, free one there by Olivia Divley. Uh, there was two or three Carnacone girls around her and, and she was dragged to the ground. So handy free here. She's just on the 21. You'd expect Olivia to, to tap this one over. As we said, the conditions very, very good for football here at Ballyhonas GA Club as that ball is tapped over the bar for the score for Clare and Clamburn. Now it's 4-5 to Carnacone's 2-10. As I said, the sun is, is right in the eye line of Michelle Higgins in the... In, uh, in Lisa Murphy so a high ball could be the tactic of the day for Karen O'Connor if they can get it and that kick out is well won by Karen O'Connor and they're on the attack up the stand side here in front of the crowd at Ballyhonish GA Club and held up there is Marie Corbett she's looking for an option and she finds it in ahead of her of Amy Dowling and there's a player over this Brianna Bruton who finds herself first touch of the game and she cuts inside her attack it gives it to Cora Staunton Cora into the large square right footed that's a save by Lisa Murphy and it's gone wide for a 45 and great play by Brianna Bruton her first touch of the game plays it off to Cora but you probably felt that Cora maybe should have stuck that yeah brilliantly played there by Brianna she took a place corner back on there went by her and Cora's running off her shoulder gave it to Cora Cora would be disappointed it was a great save by, by Lisa Gannon Cora would be disappointed she just didn't roll it along the ground there um, hit it hard hit it high and just into the path of Lisa Murphy another one of the young guns of Carnacone 15 years old Brianna Bruton in the Connors final and Cora thought about the short option but she decides to go slightly more direction she finds Brianna Bruton all alone in the left corner one forward position on the 21 she trying to get a pass inside but couldn't quite lay it off and it's going to be a free out and she's trying to find Irina Flannery just to try and get her inside to get a goal opportunity but it's going to be a free out for Kilton Tom Byrne in the right corner back position just inside the 21 and Cora turns over that free and trying to get through and it's a big shoulder Cora had the ball won and she was met by Lindsay Noon who's down on the ground and Cora has a stern word there I think for Irina Flannery um, yeah it was a bad turnover for Karna Cunn in the first place um, between Brianna and, and, and Irina um, probably just taking a couple of minutes to settle into the game so I, I think Cora's just letting them know that uh, they, need, they need to capitalise on these opportunities with they are in, in, in the, this half of the pitch Cora with the sun at her back 25 metres out puts that over the bar and it's another score for Coruscant and 2-11 Karen O'Conn 4-5 Kill Clare and Clonburn just coming up to four minutes gone in the second half of the Connacht Ladies Final the winners of, th- of this game will play the Ulster Champions as that kick out is turned over by Karen O'Conn and they're on the attack again and Darren Hughes gives it to Brianna Bruton who's seen plenty of the ball in the opening four minutes of this second half on the loop around is Amy Dowling trying to cross field ball into Louise Dowling Louise wins that there's an exchange of hand passes to Cora just inside the D and that's hit with a right boot and that's over the bar another great score for Cora Staunton Brianna Bruton just doing the simple things and playing the playing it very well yeah well done there by Brianna simple ball back out to Amy Amy played cross field ball to her sister Louise uh, Louise who gave it out to Eva Brennan and again Cora on the loop outside just took the pass and slotted it over great team score Clare and Clamber now trying to get out of their own 45. They give the ball to Olivia Dibley, the Galway senior footballer, trying to get their team moving. She leaves a long ball. 
out to the far side well head taken first time by Aoife Brennan Aoife kicks it into the right corner forward position and nearly out on the sideline for her captain Louise Ward to win faced up by Martha Carter as she has been all day and doubled up with Michelle McGing as we said it's going to be the tactic for them to try and shut that down supply but Karen O'Conn working, uh, uh, working awful hard to try and prevent any scores as Claire and Clamburn get the ball into the hand and that's just gone over the bar from about 30 metres out and it was a great score for Claire and Clamburn from the centre back Claire Dunleavy and there you can see the tactic for Karen O'Conn is to stop goals in this second half and just make them shoot from range yeah, it seems a bit more congested back there now. It seemed to have bodies back inside their own 45 and uh, they obviously spoke about it at halftime and seemed to be adapted it here in the second half, which, which will go bode well for the second half for them. Five, just coming up to six minutes gone in the second half. 2-12, Karen O'Conn, 4-6 kill, Claren Clonburn, and it's a free out for Karen O'Conn. And they're coming on the stand side here. Working inside to Michelle McGing, who's doing Trojan work of playing sweeper and as playmaker as well. And she hasn't had a hand laid onto her until she hits the Kakan Clown Burn 45. And she's still going. She gives it to Irina Flannery. Elena Flannery plays it in, trying to find Louise Dowling for her second goal, but just couldn't quite grab it. And out came Lisa Murphy and swept up the danger. And Louise Dowling was nearly in for a second. Yeah, just just defender got a hand in there uh, good defender by Kilcarn Clonburn just got a important hand in otherwise it was goal opportunity for Louise Kilcarn Clonburn patient build up again Lindsay Noon into the 45 gives it to her midfielder Siobhan Dively cuts across coming across the midfield now there's an advantage being played by the referee John Island from Sligo and that ball is slipped to Claire Dunleavy and they're in behind Karen O'Conn here they're cutting across the 45 and there's going to draw the foul and Hannah Noon was dragged down. It's going to be a free and show. Uh, looked like a side larker maybe. But brought her down, so it's going to be a free from about 35 metres. But as you said, it's trying to stop that supply seems to be Karen O'Conn's biggest problem. Yeah, and, and that, that's that's probably the second free there now in the space of minutes they've, they've given away. Um, but again, maybe it's, it's, it's the lesser of two evils. Um, they're the frees they weren't given away in the first half and, and they were getting through on goal. So maybe it's just uh, something they chatted about at halftime. Free taken, Olivia Dively. They raise the white flag, so that's another score for her, and it's 4 7, Kilclair and Clonburn, 2 12, Karen O'Conn, just seven minutes gone in the second half. Game restarted very quickly by Michelle Higgins, gives it to Fiona McHale. McHale cuts inside on the 45, lays it off. Darren Hughes now strides into midfield, comes across the pitch, gives it to Louise Dowling. It's up to Amy Dowling, her sister. And Amy is into the centre back position of Karen O'Connor. She's driving right through and she's into the 21, drops the ball but gathers it again. She's a player outside her. If she can find her, it's Arena Flannery. But she's fouled by two or three Kilclair and Clamburn players. And he's pointing at, I think it's Aoife McStay Gibbons, is the one he's uh, deemed to have drawn the foul. So it's going to be a free for Cora, just straight in front of goal on the 21. And Cora decides to have a block for goal and blocked on the line. And it's Brianna Bruton who wins the rebound tries to find Irina Flannery inside but the ball is turned over and now it's Olivia Dibley and Burn as there's a counter-attack on if they have the numbers coming and they do the shape of Siobhan, Div- Siobhan Dibley is free but there's a foul was stopped by Claire Egan the referee is uh, not happy with what he saw and he's calling Claire Egan over Claire decided to stop that run of Dibley so We'll see what John Nyland says, the referee, but it seems a strained option and there's going to be a, a sin bin, I think, here for... It's a red card. It's a red card for Claire Egan and Karen O'Connor have been reduced to 14 men, 14 players, sorry. And the, she's still remonstrating with the referee and he's telling her she's off. I, I didn't see what happened, and uh, but he's shown a red card to Claire Egan, so Karen O'Connor will play out the remaining portion of this game with 14 players so they're going to have to reshuffle and try and combat that but that's going to make Karen O'Conn's job immeasurably more difficult and Kilclair and Clamburn are inside they've exchanged the ball and it's a goal from the resulting free there was an exchange of hand passes there was a long ball played over the top and the ball was fed inside and it was shot there by I think it was Nicola the Walsh. Nick Clare finished, Nick Clare it, finished yeah. it. And Karen O'Conn, I think, were in a state of shock through the, through the red card. And there was a free player as the Claire Regan, the centre back, was sent off. So Claire and Clonburn, 5 7. Karen O'Conn, 2 12. Nine and a half minutes gone in the second half. And Karen O'Conn are down to 14 players as a kick out quickly taken. Ball exchange of hand passes there. Marie Corbett being faced up by Lisa Gannon. 
loses the ball but Cora's out in the 45 and she wins it back and Cora's going to try and take the game to kill Claire and Clonburn. she's attacking four players and she's worked her way through and she's inside the 21 Cora Staunton going to have a go with her left foot half blocked and it's looped over and Lisa Murphy would seem to be feet were planted to the ground as the ball looked that it was going to go over her head but it bounced on the crossbar and went over for the point yeah I just tipped over for a point great score by Cora there she got the, picked the ball up around the 45 she must have went around four or five players to get that score I actually think she was going for goal and just got a bit of a block off when the defenders got a block and it ended up going over the bar good response to the goal the far side Lisa Murphy kicks it out to the side and it's a free for Kinsler and Clamburn just outside their 45 on the stand side here at Ballyhonest GA Club and Karen O'Conn find themselves 2.13 to 5.7 down and we have just coming up to 11 minutes played in the second half Karen O'Connor management are having a conversation about what changes they can make as Kilclair and Clonburn have gone back to their tactic of releasing the ball early to Louise Ward finds herself in the right in the left corner forward position faced up again by Martha Carter she gets around Martha this time lays it off to Annette Clark Annette swings her right foot from about 35 metres out and that's over the bar and that's another score for Annette Clark and she's starting to have a big influence on this game yeah just as Claire Egan got sent off there um Karen Cohn didn't adapt too quickly and uh, it was actually Claire Egan who was tracking Annette Clark um, so when she was sent off it ended up she had been at the end of the, 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 the goal opportunity that time and she's after chipping in at another point so already the, sen- the, the sending off having a big impact on the game 2.13 Karen Cohn 5.8 kill Claire and Clonburn 11 and a half minutes gone in the second half and it's Michelle Higgins finds Fiona McHale McHale hugging the left hand touchline here in midfield comes trying to get around Olivia Dively she goes one within the other she has Michelle McGing ahead of her as we said who's got through a Trojan amount of work and she draws the foul from Claire Dunleavy it's going to be a free on the 45 about 15 metres in but it's taken quickly by Michelle McGing she gives it to Amy Dowling Amy coming across the large dig gets a tackle hand in by Lisa Gannon but it's a foul so it's going to be a free for Car- Karen O'Conn just on the edge of the large D and they need the score to try and cut that deficit Yes, yeah, so it's, it's 2.13 to 5.8 to five, I make that if my, if my maths are correct 22 points to 19 so important core gets this free and, and narrows the gap to 2 points There's still plenty of time for Carnacon they don't need to panic they just need to adapt or make the changes they have to play as they did in the first half as Cora Staunton gets another score for Karen O'Conn it's now 2.15 to 5.8 as we said so it's a 2 point game there's plenty of time left there's only just over, just over 12 and a half minutes gone so they just need to reshuffle and it looks like they've just gone strictly man for player for player and Michelle McGing is out around the middle was trying to track the run but she's bypassed that time as they release it early to Chloe Miskell who hits the ball into Louise Ward Louise Ward comes out to the 45 gives it back to Miskell but that pass has gone astray and the come players get in each other's way and the ball is in the, still in the danger ever for Kilkellan Clamburn they eventually move it out to Nicola Ward who lays it off for Annette Clark and Annette Clark who just got a point a moment ago adds to her tally for the day that's a, another score for Annette Clark and she has two goals and two points I think so far today yeah uh, she actually has three points three points yeah two three today um, and again one two of that is only after coming in the last five minutes when Claire Egan has been sent off so it, it goes to show the impact Claire was curtailing her fairly well in the first half it was, there was a good battle going on but since she's gone off uh, Annette's having a big influence on this game substitution on the Claire and Clamburn team and it looks like Elish Morrissey's come on and we'll see who she's gone off for but Kilclair and Clamburn are on the attack again and it's going to be a free in and it's jersey pull that time on Louise Ward and Martha Carter needs to be careful as she's uh, she's already had a card marked by the referee so it's going to be a free straight in front of the post and Olivia Dilley takes that ball it's the banished yours and the Mirishka run onto the field here it's a warm day in Ballyhonas and the players will be feeling every inch of it especially the Karen O'Conn players as we said are now down to 14 players as that ball is tapped over by Olivia Dibley and that's her fourth five frees for, for Dibley so Olivia's been deadly in the, on the free count so Karen O'Conn 2-14 Kilkelland Clamburn 5-10 14 minutes gone as we said there's plenty of time for Karen O'Conn they just need to be patient and work the ball into the player in the best position as they develop this attack on the far side in front of the Karen O'Conn dugout Sharon McGing exchanging passes that's inside the Kilclaren Clamburn 45 and Marie Corbett's kept her run going and coming across the the run is Cora she lets that one go to the 
Dowling, who's had a big influence on the game, and the ball is switched to Brianna Bruton, and she gives it inside to Irina Flannery, and Irina's bundled through, and Irina, it's a penalty for Karen O'Conn. The play developed very well over the far side. Marie Corbett found Amy Dowling, laid it off, switched the play to Brianna Bruton, she laid a little pop pass, and... To be fair to Irina Flannery, she was trying to get control of the ball and she was tripped as she was going. Yeah, Irina did very well there. The ball is just spilling away from her. She's inside the square and uh, brought down. So penalty here now again. And uh, there could even be a card. Yeah, the referee is going to his pocket. We'll just wait and see what the colour is. It's a sin mint. It's a yellow, I think, for... I think it's for Olivia Dively, who we mentioned a moment ago, and that's a big loss for... Well, Clarence Lamburn, she's been their free taker this game and to, had insult to injury, a penalty for Cora Staunton in the 16th minute of this ladies' Connacht final. Cora, three steps, right footed, bangs it into the bottom left hand corner, goal for Karen O'Conn, 3 14, Karen O'Conn, 5 10 kill Clarence Clamburn, 16 minutes gone in the second half, and you have to say the game is definitely on. The game is on now, the spec is, both teams are down to 14 for the next 10 minutes anyway, and uh, yeah, game on here. Kick out well won for, by, out in the middle of the field by Chloe Miskell from Lisa Murphy and she's driving at the Carnacon defence and she's into the 45 and again the early ball towards Louise Ward she wins that one again out in front of Martha Carter she has an options left and right but she sells the dummy to Martha Carter and she get, cuts across she's trying to get inside and that's going to be a point and the referee has his hand up he says it's a free it's another penalty it's another penalty for Kilclair and Conburn there was a foul as she, a, Louise Ward Fake the offload to her left, cuts in on her right, gets cuts across the defender, and the referee gives a penalty. Yeah, it was cutting run there by Louise. Um, as we say, as we've been saying all day, she's just causing untold trouble in there. Um, it was a super run by her, and penalty here now again for Nick Clark. Steps up, right footed, bottom corner sends Michelle Higgins the wrong way. Six goals now for Kilclair and Clonburn and 10 points. Three goals and 14 points for Karen O'Conn. 17 minutes gone in the second half. And as we said, both teams with 14 players for the for the next few minutes. And Karen O'Conn have to try and get a, a, a foothold in this game. And as we, Louise Ward has been a thorn in their side all day as Karen O'Conn win that kick out. Into midfield comes Marie Corbett, who's had a big influence on the second half so far. Pop pass over the top to Arena. And, uh, to Martha Carter, who finds herself in the opposition half of the field for a change. Maybe that's the better tactic, drive Louise Ward into her own half. She gives a quick ball there, and she's he- fouled on Fiona McHale. Cora thought about taking it quickly, but the referee wants to have a word, and Martha Carter found herself way up in the opposition 45, and maybe that's the better tactic just take that, take away that threat move up the field yeah good run by Martha there and as you said taking Louise out of, out of their own half of the pitch which is no harm whatsoever but I see them making their way back in she's not going to stay out there for too long Cora Staunton taps over that free another point for Cora 3.15 Karen O'Conn 6.10 Kilclair and Clonburn 18 minutes gone we're in for a humdinger of a finish as there's a collision on the kick out both players went for the ball I think it was what we would call a football collision I don't think there was any intent between Michelle McGing and Lindsay Noon but Lindsay Noon seems to have come off the worst No accidental uh, clash there Um, Lindsay Noon on the ground now but uh, I think it was accidental there was no intent in that and I think the referee sees it that way as well Um, yeah there's just 18 minutes gone here now and again it was a bad response by Karen O'Conn there allowing uh, Kilcar and Clamburn into their own half to give away that penalty um, just when they were coming back into the game um, the sun is strong here now today it's maybe as strong as in Tenerife for Jim Murphy's <laughs> listening in um, but uh, I think the players will be glad to this break here and get some water on 3.15 Karen O'Conn which is 24 points and Kilcar and Clamburn 6.10 which is 28 points so it's a 4 point game the sin bin will be over in about 3 minutes and as we come up to the 19th minute of the second half there's a a little bit of concern for Lindsay Noon she's uh, the referee's given her plenty of time just to make sure she's okay and she's back up on her feet thankfully and I think he the referee John Nyland from Sligo did indeed give the free but as we said it seemed more of an accidental collision than anything else so it's a the game gets back underway Annette Clark kicks possession away into the hands of Darren Hughes but she slips as she was picking it up and the referee said she was picked it up while she was still on the ground so that's going to be possession given straight back to Kilcair and Clonburn. Annette Clark delivers the ball long out in front but that's swept up well there by Karen O'Conn they were looking for Louise Ward again but that's going to be a, that's going to be a, a free out for Karen O'Conn as the foul was taken and Karen O'Conn need to get 
the ball into the attack in half the field. They need scores. They're four points down at the moment. As we said, come out to 20 minutes gone in the second half and that possession is turned over yet again. Cora trying to win it back for Karen O'Conn. She gets a hand in there on Lindsay Noonan. Cora's out around the midfield trying to win the ball and it's going to be a free in for Cacao and Clown Byrne and Cora has the ball in hand she taps it quickly to Brianna Bruton Brianna gets it up Cora Staunton takes a tumble as uh, she was with her attack and Cora and Annette Clark are exchanging words and John Nyland has a, to separate the two of them as Cora was going for the return ball from Brianna Bruton she was caught as she went through yeah uh, I think that's just experience by Annette Clark slowing the game down g- giving the free out around the 45 Karen O'Connor getting the game back on the way and it Fiona McHale trying to cut inside to get a goal opportunity. She lays it off for Aoife Brennan and Aoife comes off the wrong side of her boot and it goes off to the right and wide. It's 3.15, Karen O'Conn, 6.10, Kilclare and Clamburn. 21 minutes gone and everybody's getting very excited here for the last few minutes as Karen O'Conn need to win primary possession on the kickout. As that ball is driven long by Lisa Murphy. Can't be taken first time by Chloe Misko, but she gets it at the second attempt being chased down by Saeed Larkin hits it long towards the middle of the field and it breaks kindly for Kilclare and Clamber and they've drawn the foul Hannah Noon wins that ball and she plays it very very quickly inside to Louise Ward again Louise Ward now seems to have Marie Corbett for company but she gets around her she gets a right foot and that's over the bar Louise Ward gets another score they seem to have kind of sorted out but back there between them but there seems to be a change of uh, marker on yeah, I Louise see. Ward. I see. Uh, Marie Corb has gone in to pick up uh, Louise Ward now. I think that's probably. I'd say Marth could be on her last warning, so uh, probably a tactical move by Karen O'Connor just to take Marth off her, and um, maybe also to push out the beat that they're chasing scores now, so they might need Martha to join the attack and uh, uh, get the ball down the field. Michelle McGing in the centre back position pops it into midfield to Fiona McHale. McHale looking for options, held up by Annette Clark, hits it long towards. Arena Flannery who finds herself all alone on the 45 and she has support coming from Amy Dowling and the referee says that's a free there was an advantage played from the pass and Cora is trying to get the players show a bit of encouragement so it's going to be a free for Cora just outside the D about 10 metres to the right of the left hand upright so Cora with a chance to cut into that deficit as we said let's go the crowd goes quiet as she steps up three steps right foot and that's gone into the goal. It's a goal for Karen O'Conn. The ball dropped over the head of Lisa Murphy. It's a goal from Karen O'Conn. Eva McStay Gibbons, Lisa Murphy, mix up between the two. Nobody called it. The ball dropped short over their heads. It's a goal for Karen O'Conn. 4 15, Karen O'Conn. 6 11, Kilclaren Clonburn. Coming up to 23 minutes gone in the second half, and Karen O'Conn have a lifeline here. Yeah, bad mistake there by the cornerback and the goalkeeper. Uh, Free just sailed in over their heads. No one really went for it. And uh, Karen O'Connor will definitely take it. It's a two-point game now. It's 27 plays 29. As we said, 23 minutes now. And it's a free for Karen O'Connor. It's on the 45, taken quickly. And bursting through there is Fiona McHale. She shrugs off one challenge. There's an advantage for... She lays it to Cora. Cora carrying the ball. Takes one hop. Left foot. Saved by Lisa Murphy. The ball comes back to Cora. And it's another penalty for Karen O'Connor as Cora is on the ground. Cora Staunton came out around the field exchanged passes and it's another penalty fantastic five penalties one sending off one sending in absolutely fantastic game the crowd are getting behind it now as well but it was a clear penalty three or four super saved by Lisa in the first place uh, ball bounced back out to Cora and uh, there was four or five defenders around her it was a clear cut penalty um, but she strong running from now. Fiona McHale bursting through the defence there was a, a wall of red and she managed to get three and she gave a great pass inside as Cora shot as you say saved by Lisa Murphy but Cora followed in and got a rebound you have to say that it's, it's been an absolutely Ding dong battle, 4 15 for Karen O'Conn, 6 11 for Kilclaren Clonburn at the moment, and they still have a penalty. Core is injured, she's just getting a little bit of treatment. We have 24 minutes gone in the second half, and I don't think I can remember a game with five penalties. No, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> crazy stuff. And to be, to be fair to the referee, I think the five penalties were five penalties. Mm-hmm. Core is up on her feet, she's going to take this penalty as the linesman comes in, possibly just to check what. At a time there may be the the sin bin is about to be reversed as well. Olivia Dively is to re-enter the game. As we said, Karen O'Connor down to 14 players after the sending off of Claire Egan. Cora, three steps, right foot, same result. Goal for Karen O'Connor. 
5.15 Karen O'Conn 6.11 Kilclare and Clonburn and with Orla Dibley to come back into Olivia Dibley to come back into the game it's going to be a, a very interesting last few moments yeah look into the five minutes and I suppose to be added time we could, we could be up in eight or nine minutes left here it's, it's 5.15 to 6.11 I think it's time to take out the calculators to, <laughs> to make up the score I make it a one point game in favour of Cardiff Hull Okay, Karen Clonburn get the ball into midfield and it's one there for Claire Dunleavy she's released to Louise Ward there was a tug of the jersey the advantage is being played Louise gets around Michelle McGing she's trying to get around Marie Corbett as well she's held up so it's going to be a free for the original in infringement so Louise Ward is remonstrating with the referee that it should be more but he brings it back to the original foul so it's going to be a, a free in for Claire and Clonburn as we said 5-15 for Karen O'Conn which is 30 points, plays 6-11 for Kilclare and Clonburn, which is 29. And that's tapped over, so it's another score. And Olivia Dibley is uh, back into the game as well, so it's uh, it's all going off here, as we said, as we enter the last four minutes, plus whatever the referee is going to allow for stoppages. 5-15 plays 6-12, it's a tied game. And Karen O'Conn have played most of this second half with 14 players and they've performed admirably as Martha Carter once again finds herself up in the opposition half of the field. Martha gives it to Louise Dowling. Louise has a goal with her right butt from distance and that's over the bar. A fantastic score for Louise Dowling adding to this goal that she got in the first half. She's performed very well here for... Karen O'Connor as she's come out to midfield is Olivia Dively as we mentioned is back on the field and she's not been picked up and she's received that ball from a kick out from Lisa Murphy comes inside Aoife Brennan Aoife Brennan f- stops the play in midfield so it's going to be a free for Kilclare and Clonburn we have just coming up to 27 minutes of the second half played as we will be whatever the referee allows as Hannah Noon gets the free on the far side on the 45 held up by Michelle McGing Slips it to Chloe Miskell. She slips as she tries to pass it, but free is Nicola Ward. Nicola Ward one-on-one with Martha Carter. Sends her left, sends her right. Looking for a support. She finds it in the shape of Ailish Morrissey. And that one is just kicked to the right and wide. So it's 5-16, Karen O'Conn. 6-12, Kilclare and Clonburn. That's it. It's a one-point lead for Karen O'Conn. One-point lead for Karen O'Conn and a important kick-out here for Michelle Higgins. She finds Fiona McHale. Fiona always trustworthy to, to get a kick-out um, and she's after giving it to, to Darren here. So they just, they just need to hold possession here and cool heads. The, the, mainly us as well as the players, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the way this game is going is Fiona McHale gets the ball back on the stand side here in front of a good crowd here is Mikhail trying to keep possession trying to make sure that nobody no possession is given away lightly Korif coming in the 45 she's just in front here on the left hand left half forward position going, cuts across onto her right goes one way inside says Gormley the other shrugs off the shoulder of Lindsay Noon Cora looking to switch the play to the far side there's two free players the other side somebody puts a call and that's well taken by Aoife Brennan she gives a hand pass to Amy Dowling Louise Dowling she gives it in sight to Martha Carter left footed over the bar Martha Carter who has made a couple of runs up the field has been released as we said the switch Marie Corbett's gone back and Martha Carter found herself in the full forward position and a nice score yeah this switch this switch doing going really well for Carter Cohn with Marie taking up Louise Ward now and, and that allowed Martha down the field excellent point off her left foot 90 seconds of normal time left Karen O'Conn have a two point lead as Kilclare and Clonburn are driving forward again Louise Ward wins a free the, is it, Annette Clark has continued to run but Fiona McHale was aware of it the free taken across back to Olivia Dibley who's going to have a go from all of 30, 40 metres and that's gone to the right and wide a second wide as we come into the last minute of the game Karen O'Conn are two points up Karen O'Conn 5-17 Kilclare and Clonburn 6-12 it's been an, an, as we said if the first half was anything to go by the second half has been even better oh what a fantastic game it's really come down to the wire now it's just important that uh, um, Karen O'Conn hold on to possession Michelle, or Michelle Higgins there with a fantastic kick out again once, to, once again to Fiona McHale she's done tireless work today Karen O'Conn no, they just have to keep possession and not do anything silly and turn over the ball as they're working the ball through the hand pass at the moment and the pressure is really being applied by Kilclare and Clonburn but Karen O'Conn, as we said before, are playing with only 14 players 
They seem the stronger team. They have more running and more more work. And Arena Flannery is free in the left half forward position. Goes inside, drives forward, but she barges through and then draws the foul. Lindsay Noon goes down and she's a judge to have bar, so it's going to be a free out for Kilcown Comburn, taken by Sarah Gormley, who switches the play to the far side. But Chloe Costello can't get a hand to that ball and it's just about kept in on the sideline, on the halfway line. She comes inside. Chloe Miskell, Olivia Dively, who's missing and as we said for 15 minutes due to a sin bidding and switches the play across to Louise Ward Louise being chased by Sive Larkin and Mary Corbett switch comes up they work the ball over to Olivia Dilly on the far side and Olivia Dilly who shot wide just a moment ago finds her range again and now it's a one point game we have the 30 minutes is up we'll be approaching whatever the referee is going to allow as there's a Kilclare and Clamburn player down on the halfway line and it looks like the referee John Nyland is having a word with one of the Carnacon players. It's 5.17 Carnacon, 6.13 Kilclare and Clonburn. You see what's happened here. It's obviously he's been informed of what, what's happened. So, From our vantage point here, we can't quite see who he's talking to. Or It's a sin bin. It looks like it's... Uh, is that Aoife Aoife Brennan? Brennan? Aoife Brennan. So 31 minutes played in the second half here. Karen O'Connor down to 13. 13 players now so they have a one point lead they they, they know they're going to have to work even harder again now as Fiona McHale draws the foul and it was a good foul to win if there's a foul to be given so Olivia Divoli who's already been sin bent she's going about to see a different colour Olivia Divoli is shown the line Olivia Divoli is sent off so it's 14 on 13 and as we said, with whatever the referee is allowing, we don't have a board here. We haven't seen how much additional time there is, but Karen O'Conn have a one-point lead. It's 5-17, Karen O'Conn. 6-13, Kilclare and Clonburn. Coming up to 32 minutes played in the second half of the ladies' Connacht final. Live on Midwest Radio from Ballyhonest GA Club and Fiona McHale once again, who's been doing, as Yvonne said, Trojan work all day, is carrying the attack to Kilclare and Clonburn. And Martha Carter, who's been playing much higher up the pitch in this second half into the centre forward position Cora comes out on the loop as she has done most of the game Cora Staunton right footed that's going to drop short into the hands of Lisa Murphy Lisa Murphy gets cleared up and it gets out to Lindsay Noon Lindsay Noon is trying to find Chloe Costello Costello to Annette Clark the centre forward back in the left half back position Claire and Clamburn need a score to level this game which will take us to a replay and they cut across inside. Arena Flannery holds her up. Lindsay Noon. Long hand pass into the hands of Chloe Miskell. Chloe Miskell is in about 15 yards of space and she's still going forward. She lays it off to Louise Ward. Louise Ward tries to go one way, then the other comes inside. Ray Corbett and it's been held up. They're trying to not get a shot off. They're trying to close out the gap, but there's a f- player free on the far side. Right foot blocked down on the 15 yard line and the ball eventually gets it out to a- Ailish Morrissey. Ailish Morrissey swings her right foot at that ball and it's over the bar. The substitute, the 16 year old, swings her right foot at that and it's over the bar. It's a fantastic game of football 33 minutes gone in the second half 5-17 Karen O'Conn 6-14 Clare and they've turned over the kick out Clare and Clown trying to get into the attack switches the ball inside the ball is blocked down and it's shot by Nicola Ward blocked down Karen O'Conn are trying to get the game moving quickly they know they need a score to win this game and it's the final whistle is blown it's a draw <laughs> it's, it's as far Re- we're waiting for it's a next replay Sunday, next Sunday I we believe is the it's a replay next Sunday as far as we know this game with 34 minutes played is 5-17 Karen O'Conn 6-14 Kilclaren Clown